Okay. So first off, I just want to say a very big thanks to Twilio and especially Sid and Michael, who've just spent the last 45 minutes trying to get me on the network so I can do a demo. And um, so we're looking good as of two minutes ago, so fingers crossed. So I'm going to talk a little bit about high touch customer service using Twilio and Zendesk. This is me, Wesley Gorman. I'm an engineer with Zendesk, where I work on our voice and chat applications. Just to get a bit of a rough feel for the audience, can I just ask how many people use or have used Zendesk? Awesome. Um, and out of interest, how many people have built something using the Twilio API before? Cool. So Zendesk builds customer service software. We try and keep it beautifully simple. Main people who would be using our software um, would be customer service agents who are trying to resolve issues for their customers, admins and managers who try and manage the incoming queue of tickets, um, and end customers who can access the customer portal and um, part of the software, log issues to different companies, search forums, help desk articles, those kind of things. So we're all about customer service, trying to make it as simple as possible to deliver a great customer service experience to your customers. Uh, part of that is to help increase customer engagement. You want to be as proactive as possible. Um, this is part of what I'll be talking about with the high touch approach. So your very important customers, you want to be as proactive as possible, get in contact with them anytime they have any issues, make sure that those issues are progressing through your queue and hopefully getting to a good resolution that the customer is going to be happy with at the end. And as I said, we also have customer portals, which will allow customers to use a self-service approach, um, which a lot of customers would prefer rather than having to create a ticket, email a company, and wait for responses. So as I said, I work on voice in Zendesk, um, which is built on top of Twilio. So for the past year, I've been working on a daily basis with Twilio. Um, it's been a lot of fun, really exciting, actually, how I first saw Zendesk Voice was actually a TwilioCon presentation. So at the first TwilioCon, Adrian, who leads up the engineering department in Zendesk, did a presentation of our then new voice product. And I was sitting in work one afternoon, getting later on in the afternoon, so I started browsing Hacker News for a little bit, saw this link towards the top for call centers in the cloud, clicked on that, had a look at the presentation, and basically what you could do with Twilio and what Zendesk had done absolutely blew my mind. So that was about two years ago. About a year ago, I joined Zendesk and have been working on Zendesk Voice since. And just to complete the circle, I've got the opportunity to present here at Twilio Con Europe as well. So really excited to be here. So some of the functionality that Zendesk Voice gives you is the ability to accept an inbound call which gets rooted in via Twilio. So there's our call console. Um, this pops up when you get an incoming call. You click accept. It'll pop up a new Zendesk ticket. You can type away as you're talking to the customer, take whatever notes you need. Then at the end, you click uh, save. And we make a call back to Twilio, get the recording of the call, and automatically attach that to the ticket. As of about last December or January of this year, you can also make outbound calls. Pretty much the same exper user experience applies. We make the call, pop open the ticket, and then add the recording to the ticket at the end. And the last point is if you're looking at a customer's profile, uh, and if they've got a phone number there, you can also click on the drop down and click call this <coughs> number. So that will just make an outbound call to the customer. So that's just a very quick overview of Zendesk and the kind of stuff that I've been working on for the last year. What I'd talk to, like to talk to about in a little more, bit more detail today is how you can use Twilio and Zendesk to build a more high-touch customer service for your businesses.
So when you're a small five-person startup, managing your customer service is very easy to do. Everybody knows who their most important customers are. Everybody's probably in constant communication. If you're all in the same location, it's probably five people in a small area. So if you have an issue, everybody knows about it. You can get in touch with your customers, let them know that you're dealing with this issue, give them a bit of a heads up so that they don't have to be contacting you. And customers really value that. It builds great relationships with customers. So you can build those relationships with your high value customers when you're small. As you begin to get bigger, when maybe instead of a five person startup, maybe you've got 50 staff, instead of maybe 100 customers, maybe you've got a couple of thousand. So at that point, when you start having issues, it becomes much more difficult to give that kind of high touch, intense customer service where you're being proactive, getting in touch with the customer, making sure the customer feels cared for, making sure that they're getting the information they need if there is an issue, and making sure that that issue is being pushed through to resolution. So, customer service is oftentimes a big competitive advantage and a differentiator for different, for trying to acquire customers and trying to keep customers. Zenas has done some research on it. Some of the headlines that I've pulled from that is 81% tell family and friends about customer service that they receive. Uh, Zenas started an office in Dublin last year. We had two people, and um, right now we've got about 27. So I've kind of seen this myself over the past year as we've had new people joining the team, moving to Dublin. And so they'll often ask around the office, you know, who do you get your cable TV and broadband from? What banks should I go to? What's the easiest one to get set up? And actually, in a lot of cases, there's not too much difference between the different banks' products. There's not too much difference between the different cable TV providers. So often, it turns out to be a conversation about who's the best company to deal with, and who are the easiest to deal with. If you have an issue, who are going to be the people that resolve your issue quickly and simply without you having to waste lots of time following up on it? 45% broadcast their experience on social media. You've probably all seen that. Somebody has a bad customer service experience. Uh, they broadcast about it. It goes viral, gets into the news, and all of a sudden, that negative experience that they've had is widely circulated. Uh, Yelp, incredibly popular, and there's lots of localized versions in different markets as well, done by other companies. Lots of people like sharing their opinion when they get good service, and more particular, when they get bad service. 52% uh, of people will continue to do business with your company if they feel that they're getting good customer service. And of high-income high households, 79% are likely to avoid vendors for two years or more after a bad customer service experience. We probably don't need stats to tell us this. We probably know ourselves from experiences that we've had. Once you get burnt by a bad experience dealing with a company, you're much, much less likely to deal with them again. So as your business grows and you get more and more issues coming up because you have more and more customers, unless you resolve those issues quickly and efficiently, the amount of customers you have is slowly going to drain away. <coughs> So what's the solution to this? So this is going to be a quick example of how we can build a basic application that's going to integrate with Twilio and with Zendesk and allow us to solve part or all of that problem. So we're going to develop a little system that will alert support on issues raised by high value customers. So one of the things a lot of people do in Zendesk is order different customers, they put different tags on those customers' profiles, and when a ticket comes in from that customer, that tag can get applied to their tickets. That just helps for sorting different things. You can have a view for your high, 
high value VIP customers. So we're going to do something based on that. You could also do it based on an SLA, uh, or you can also do various different things using satisfaction ratings. Once you get an issue resolved in Zendesk, a quick satisfaction survey gets sent to the customer asking them whether they're satisfied or not. So that's one of the things that we're very focused on on Zendesk. Every uh, satisfaction rating that comes in that has a comment gets posted onto our company Yammer um, for everybody to see. So if you have a bad experience, you mark it as a bad experience, give a comment, everybody in the company is going to see that and we're going to do our damnedest to try and turn your opinion around and make you a happy customer again. Uh, recently as well, they've also added, started adding good customer service ratings and comments. So that's also great to see. Like when somebody has a great, great experience with dealing with our support staff, it's great to see and hear about that and also dip into the ticket and have a look and see what was done well and see what we can learn from that too. So once we try and set this up, there's a couple of ways that we can use to cause actions to occur. Sorry, I should have said. So what we're going to do is, based on the tag that I'm going to apply to a ticket, we're going to make a call out to this simple application that we're going to develop. We're going to pass it some information, and then we're going to use Twilio to send a text to alert people that this high value customer has an issue. That's hopefully going to get people's attention, get their eyes on it. You could also do something like this using the priority of a ticket. So let's say Amazon uh, Web Services go down, and maybe somebody's going to create a high priority or urgent ticket. Maybe that's something you'd like to have texted out to all your staff to make sure everybody knows about the issue, that you can contact your high value customers, and so that your support and operations staff can kick into gear and start trying to deal with the issues. And in this case, we're going to use a trigger to take some action on a ticket that meets this criteria. So first thing I'm going to do, and actually I've already done it, so I'll just give you a run through it. We set up a target, um, which will send an SMS with a ticket comment and a requester name to the API of this application we're going to build. Then we're going to set up a trigger, and that trigger will send a message to our SMS target that we've set up uh, when an update or new ticket is created or a negative satisfaction rating is given. So fingers crossed for this bit. So I threw together a simple Snatcher application here. Um, all this is going to do, so this is going to be the API endpoint that we're going to get our trigger to call. It's going to pass us some inputs, which we're going to have a quick check on. I'm actually setting some defaults here, so let me get rid of these. And if any of our parameters are missing, we're going to throw a 400 error. Then we're going to get a, get a user from our local database. Then we're going to build our text message. Uh, so I hadn't heard about the new way of sending very long text messages uh, using Twilio, which I just learned about this morning. So when I was writing this, I'm just looping over my message and splitting it into 160 characters pieces. And then I'm going to send multiple messages if needs be. Then we come to our first piece of Twilio. So here I'm just setting up an instance of the Twilio REST client. So this is Ruby code. I'm using the Twilio Ruby gem. It makes it ridiculously simple to interact with Twilio and get simple pieces of code like this up and running really quickly. And also, if you're building something more complex, it also helps a lot with that as well. So I'm getting my account, and then I'm going to create an SMS message that's going to be sent from a Twilio phone number that I purchased yesterday. Um, it's going to be sent to the user's phone number that I'm pulling from my local database. And then it's going to contain the message with some of the parameters that Zendesk has sent over to me via my trigger. 
So once that text message goes off, then we want to update our ticket in Zendesk uh, with another tag to let people know that the SMS has been sent for this ticket. So it's just a little bit of verification so that we know a message went out because this is a VIP customer and anybody going into the ticket will be able to see, yeah, that message sent successfully. So what we're going to do here is create an instance of a Zendesk client. Uh, for this, I'm using the Zendesk API gem. Get the tickets for this customer's account. And then in those tickets, find by ID of the parameter that's been passed to me via the Zendesk trigger. Then I'm going to add a tag to that ticket, save it, and hopefully all's gone well, and I'm going to return a status 200. So within Zendesk, I'm looking at my admin screen here. Um, once I click on extensions, I can see any active targets that I've set up. So if I go in here, so what a target is, or there's multiple types of target. What we're going to just use in this example is just a URL target. So I've got URL to my application, which is running locally on my machine. SMS is the endpoint that I'm trying to hit here. Can people see that, or is it tiny? It's tiny. Whoa. So this is URL to the app running on my machine, or SMS endpoint, and here are the params that I'm trying to send. So ID is equal to ticket.id, email is equal to ticket.requester, that's actually going to be the name, not the email, uh, body is going to be ticket.title. So whenever a new ticket gets created with a VIP tag assigned to it, this trigger is going to run, fire off a request to that URL, hit our endpoint in my Sinatra application. That's going to talk to Twilio, send an SMS, to my phone with that message and then update the ticket with our SMS sent tag. So I'm going to give that a try. So I'm going to add a VIP tag to this ticket. So that's one of our very important people, one of our customers that we really care about getting feedback back to as quickly as possible. So you can think of maybe as your organization is growing, maybe customer account managers are people that you're going to want to notify of any issues with these VIP customer accounts. So click on new, and hopefully, <whistles> yo, I'm very excited that this worked. I had no ability to get on the network for about 40 minutes right before this. So as you can see here, I've got a text saying, VIP user Wesley has this issue with ticket number 25. Here is the ticket title. My printer is on fire. So you can think of how powerful that one might be. It's a pretty simple piece of code. Um, Twilio and Zendesk APIs make it really, really easy to do things like this. This is realistically a very simple example, but there are lots of different ways that you could apply that basic mechanism to push out information when your customers are having issues, allow somebody to get right back to the customer as quickly as possible, say, OK, we know you have an issue, we're looking at it, we need some more information from you, and basically make the customer feel as if you're on top of the issue, and make sure that they have all of the information that you have, maybe give them an estimated time to resolution, all of those kind of things that are gonna make your customer think and realize that you're making your best effort to resolve their issue, and that you let them know that you really care about getting this issue resolved for them, and hopefully, ultimately, keep that customer happy and coming back to you again and again, paying you lots of money for a great service.
Okay, so a couple of Twilio tips generally. Um, so as I said, I spend all day, every day working with Twilio when we're working on Zendesk Voice. These are some tips that have really helped us over the last while. First thing, read the manual. So as I was trying to explain earlier, when I saw what could be done using Twilio for the first time, I was absolutely amazed. It's like just a ridiculous thing to be able to do from the web. Um, so when I started playing around with Twilio, I started working through a tutorial, reading some of the documentation, got about three paragraphs in, got my first call to work, and then I just abandoned the documentation and went off and started playing around with different examples. When I went back to read the documentation, after I started hitting some blockers, um, it was really useful. And there's some great documentation, some great articles up on the Twilio website. Pretty much every issue that you could hit or every bad assumption that you could make is documented on there. Um, and 99% of the time, checking the docs will lead you in the right direction. The Twilio dev tools are an absolute lifesaver. And um, so we've got a lot of customers making a lot of different calls using Zendesk Voice. When we have an issue, uh, we normally turn to Twilio's app monitor, which will give us a list of all of the issues that have happened on that sub account, grouped by different error codes. And we can jump in there, have a look at the requests that came back. So when Twilio makes a request to Zendesk Voice, have a look at the response that we've given it with a list of all of the parameters. Uh, they've recently updated the dev tools, and it's absolutely fantastic right now. So a little bit like I did here with this simple Sinatra application, one of the first things that we do when we've got a big new feature to develop using Twilio is we build a simple proof of concept in a Sinatra application. So Zendesk is a very big application. There's lots of different areas that we're connected into with the voice product. So it's nice to be able to step outside of that complexity, get our basic workflow up and running with Twilio, make sure that we're happy with the functionality that we've built there, and then we start hooking it into the Zendesk voice workflow. And lastly, Twilio support. Uh, I would say there's probably not a day that goes by that we're not onto Twilio uh, and Twilio support staff asking some question in order, be it to follow up on a call that we need some more information on to debug an issue, whether it's just asking general questions that, you know, hey, we're trying to build this. We're not exactly sure what approach is going to work best. Can you give us some information? Um, and the Twilio support guys are fantastic. Um, they're normally straight back to us within an hour or two and um, always give us great answers. So if you're using Twilio and if you get stuck at a certain point, fire them off a request. More than likely, they'll be able to point you in the right direction and get back to you really quickly. So just to finish off, so hopefully um, I've explained a little bit of why customer service matters. Hopefully I've come up with some ideas as to how you could use uh, Twilio to improve how you reach out to your customers whenever there is an issue. And hopefully that can help you provide a proactive support loop. Any questions? Thanks very much. Thank